Let's check out the way they line up on the Fuso starting grid. Pole position, Jason Bright. He's had a race win so far this year. He's alongside Wind Cup. He'll want to retaliate after that last race. The battle renews between Fabian Coulthard and Garth Tander. They've had some aggro this year. James Courtney, Mark Winterbottom, positions five and six. Frosty's been in the middle of it all weekend. This is a nice touch. The brothers, Davison, Alex on the left there and Will on the right. Further back on row number five, it's Craig Lowndes and Russell Ingle. He's made some subtle changes to the car and he's qualified very well for this one, Rusty. You mentioned Craig Lowndes. You remember he won the first race of 2013. And ever since he's been stuck on 90 career race wins, he has also yet to have a race victory at this track. Is today the day? Tony Dalberto, Team High Flex, and John O'Webb, Team Techno, Daryl Lee, 17 and 18. The Kelly brothers, Nissan Motorsport, the Altimers, alongside each other for 19 and 20. Holdsworth and David Wall from Wilson Security Racing, out of Bradley Jones's organisation. And there's Tim Blanchard and Tim Slade. And we'll have 26 starters. Scott Pye did not make it to this event after the big crash in Tasmania. And Scott McLaughlin ruled out after damage to car number 33 at the end of race eight. So that's the view for Jason Richards' family. <laughs> and uh, it'll be a proud moment for them when the Memorial Trophy is handed out later on this afternoon. And you heard from the boys on, on the grid talking to Jason Bright as he comes up over the hill and Fabian Coulthard in particular, just how much this means to them. It's quite extraordinary, Compo, to hear a driver talk more about not the race win itself, but the overall trophy. Well, Jason Richards era. was, you know, highly regarded, greatly loved. Um, these colours that you see right in front of you there in Jason Bright's case are just like Jason Richards ran in that team. And the JR holds a special place in their hearts. There's still, if you look at the B pillar on the driver's side of Jason Bright's car, there's still a little star on the B pillar. And it's the JR star and it'll be on every Brad Jones racing car forever. There it is. It's a beautiful touch. Last of the cars are forming up. So Jason Bright, one win already this season. This is his second pole position green flag, green flag. of the year. This is the day we recognise one of our true fans in V8 supercar history. Jason Richards Memorial Trophy on the line. And Bright will comfortably settle into position number two. He's not going to argue the point because Wing Cup got a really good flyer off the front wow. and has streeted them up to turn three and four. What a gap for Jamie Wincup. It was a really perfect start, wasn't it? Unbelievable start. Starts this weekend have been fantastic. They're alongside each other down there. The FPR guys and the Triple Eight guys again. We've seen this before. This time it's Lowndes and Will Davison. They both go through cleanly. Premier off the road a little there at six. Tanda looking up the inside of Bright. There's history here. Just seven days ago in Tassie. They give each other racing room. That's great. The wind cup's just blown them away off the oh! start. Dean Fiore. That's a biggie. That's a very fast section of road, Matt. There's a kink there. Let's have a, a look. Well, he's oh, made it into pit lane, no I, um, but that is unbelievable. I thought for sure we're going to get our next camera shot and see that car in the tyre wall. Don't know whether there was contact, but he went off the edge of the road, and that is so fast. Well, that's one of the most spectacular entries into pit lane of all time. The point was that Winkup just brained them off the start. It's a one and a half second lead. Will he get caught for speeding? Ben Steering, Ben Steering. Saying he's got uh, Ben Steering there. I can't believe that. I thought I was for certain that we were going to see that car in the fence, and, and you hold your breath when you see a car leave the road at that pace. So I'm, I'm pleased in some respects that we're seeing Dean in the pit lane. Whether there's a penalty or not, probably a bit immaterial at the moment because I was fearful for what we may have seen then. I was joking. I know. Turn 10.
there's the margin. 1.53 seconds, Win Cup to Bright. A 63.9. So Win Cup's got the eyes on two tenths of a second quicker. He made a huge jump here. The replay shows the story. He got it all done by the time they got down through the first four corners. They were pretty well behaved. A very good start. And this was the spot. Oh, I don't know whether it was with Webb or with Moffat. I'm not sure which car was involved in that. Unconventional pit lane entry, that one. <laughs> it was seriously fast, wasn't it? Got away with it. Garth Tander made the observation in the break that one of the tricks at the moment, given the topsy-turvy performance, look at Van Gisbergen down the inside of Russell Ingle and makes it stick. Just. Rusty comes back at him up on the outside. This will be interesting because turn 10 is for the Brave when you're side by side. That'll put Ingle on the inside in the final corner. And he grabs it back. Nice well job, Russell. Jeez, you hold your breath, don't you? Especially with that grass on the infield there. If he goes in there, he'll spear across the top of the hill and up over the other side. Just finished that remark of, uh, here we go. Here's the replay again. And have a look at this. Oh, <laughs> that's great. That is great Could you stuff. get a feeler gauge in that gap? That is just great stuff. Wow, that's tight. Yeah, Tanda was saying at the moment with a variety of different car performances and a lot of the lunacy, half the battle at the moment is going to be get through these early races just with points to try and be sensible. He said in December it's going to matter. Here's Premier down the inside and that's not going to work out for him when they get to turn six. And uh, look at Caruso just battling away here. They've just done a transmission change in that car. Great job by the Nissan boys between races. That's a big effort. Premier up the inside again of Caruso. It goes on and on. Michael has to grab the brake. He got a neutral then. Has he got a problem there? Maybe. No, you know, he got the pit limiter. He was. That's what happened. He popped the pit that's limiter the in first gear. Off. Hasn't taken long for Jason Bright to get back in the groove. Let's check out this one though. Oh, Tim Blanchard and Murrow Engel. So Bright has got back into the groove quickly, and it's now 0.8 of a second. It's like those days when you, you're busy trying to make your own accident you get the wipers going just to show everybody that you're completely out of control <laughs> <laughs> always hurts your accident if you do that <laughs> so wink up from bright now bright currently leads the jason richards memorial trophy because he's in second position will davison is in eighth 249 plays 237 cumulative points it got neglected in the push and shove in that last race but we had uh, Rick Kelly strongly inside uh, the top 10 again in the last one. Here we go, it's all on again at the hairpin. Oh. It's like a carbon copy. I wasn't sure whether we were looking at a replay, a replay or not. Only... Oh! Oh! Only, only this time they slightly raised the temperature. It was a little bit firmer contact going into the final corner. So that was strike two. I don't think they should play anymore on that one. And this is, Ingle loves this stuff. And, yeah. and the more you get into a street fight with him, the more he'll give you a street fight. Don't worry, Ben Gisberg is not bad at it. And down the inside, <laughs> he lunges. So does Dave Reynolds. So does Jonathan Webb. Something happened and so, do, and so does Moffat. James Moffat. Uh -oh. So this is fantastic. Uh-oh, three abreast on approach down to turn five. Oh, no. 250 Ks. I want to Who's going to give? Escape's moving his bed around. <laughs> I want to be in the Nissan. He's on the inside. Well done. Two, actually three positions for James Moffat. Very good race craft. Get down there. Well done. <laughs> That's great racing. Seriously. Four cars all abreast. Firing into turn five. Massive track width. All gave each other some room. No bumping and shoving. That is the highest level motorsport you will see anywhere in the world. That was nudging towards being four wide down into turn five. When those cars go past you down there into turn one, when you're physically at the racetrack, it's just a line of thunder. This massive bundle of energy goes past you. It's quite spooky. Check the replay out. This is the second time these guys got into it here. This time, there's just a little bit more of a touch here it is from onboard Dave Reynolds' car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't explain 
how wild that is. That's 210 kilometres an hour at that left-hand kink. So they've had a little bump at 210 k, get it onto the straight. They make 215 k at the middle of the corner and down the straight at 255. So here's Prema down the inside of Webb. This is a lively battle. He just ran him off. He'll be in strife for that. He just ran wide. Didn't give him enough racing room on the exit there. And there'll be more to come out of that one. Incidentally, I spoke to Courtney between the races and he thought that Van Gisbergen had gone straight ahead. Didn't have him in the left mirror at all in that incident in the previous race. Remember we thought, you know, where, where is he? What's going on? That's exactly what happened. So James went back to his normal line. The last thing he expected to do was to fall across the front of the VIP Pet Foods car. That's right. Yeah, he said to me I couldn't find him. I didn't know where he was. Now he have said, a look at he this. He found so, him eventually. Uh, yeah, yeah, he did, yeah, when he went to turn the wheel. So down the inside comes Prema. He gets the job done down to there, so he, basically the cars are level, but he's, he can see there that he's run straight out and there's no room for Webb on the outside. Now we've seen so many cars and bad sportsmanship flag for car 34. Failing to give racing room is what the verdict from the judiciary have said. Now what we've done is missed all this in the last few laps, but the lunacy's been going on in that range of the field and sort of 10th through to wherever that is. Well, this rhythm, is, this rhythm has come back, like I said, to Jason Bright. 0.3 of a second, so there's nothing in it now. That golden run that Wing Cup had off the start has now evaporated. Now it's now it's a two-man fight at the front. Could be about cold starting pressures in the tyres. Remember that yesterday they popped a tyre on Jamie Wing Cup's car. The fact that he bolted so quick so soon suggests to me that the pressures were up slightly for this one, but now it's beginning to catch up with him, perhaps. Eyeball engineering from afar is always dangerous, but Bright is definitely closing that margin down. It's exactly 0.4 at the last measure. No doubt, that's exactly the reason, Compo, and he, he bolted so early. He had great car speed in the first little bit, but Bright's now edging back, and he's right there behind him. The very interesting one for me is the three team cars that are line astern, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Alex Davison with that drama we saw from qualifying with Mark Winterbottom. Winterbottom right behind him, in seventh, you can just see them there. There's the three team cars in the back of shot. Bright's got real strength at the moment, and the reason you can see this is because he's got the ability to place the car at the moment. As he came off the hairpin then, he was much shallower on the exit and much squarer on the rear tyres. That has the effect of looking after the loaded, in this case, left rear tyre, and it means, generally speaking, that your car's in pretty good shape. The balance of it is quite good. The front and the rear working in harmony to give the driver what he's looking for. So if, if he's got good turn and good drive, which I suspect from what I saw at the hairpin he has, then Bright's going to be a real problem here for Jamie Wincup. So coming up to the hairpin, we'll see it again. It's amazing the pace they get back to here, just above 170 k's. Down the inside goes Bright. This is for the lead of the race. This is what Mark Larkham talked about, and he gets it done. Nice job, Jason Bright. Brilliant. And into the distance he goes. And exactly what you were talking about. He had the confidence to place the car in the right spot great work, mate, great work. and Come make that move happen. And if you compare that move with the Wink Cup move on Winterbottom, that's a much better move. That's a genuine spontaneous but in terms of the protocols a very well executed pass so has jamie got anything by response here's the replay lots of space and in fact if anything i think jamie approached it the right way as well he didn't try and turn down on him exactly. so there's a professional response there from the reigning champion as well and you've got to dip your hat for that one so here it is again down the inside, lots of brake pressure, square on both front tyres for Bright. And in the process of letting that happen, Wincup didn't allow himself to be shoved wide and lose a heap of ground, so he holds a good tight P2, very important. So after starting from pole position and watching Jamie Wincup get the jump, Jason Bright has fought back, and this battle at Ford Performance Racing continues as well. Out of the same garage, they're going blow for blow. Back at Pukekohe right after this. This is storm clouds brewing. Yes. This one. And you mentioned it, Mark. 
Alex Davis and Mark Winterbottom. You know the history there. Will Davison tucked in behind them, so you're looking at position six, seven, and eight. Just hazard a guess, but I doubt whether Alex will do him many favours. Well, well, why would you? Why would you? Except that there'd be team blokes saying, you know, let him buy, let him buy, let him buy, which again, he has. Now this is a brother Will uh, having a look down the inside. Not too brotherly, is it? Heard <laughs> of the Anzac spirit, but here we go. Oh, well done. Okay, head down. And so that uh, moves Mark Winterbottom up to sixth. Will Davison is in seventh. His brother Alex is in eighth. Lowndes is in ninth and Van Gisbergen is 10th. Surprised how far back Van Gisbergen is and the other part of their performances uh, in this race is going to be all about tyres as well and the way they've been managed over the weekend. So coming up now to nearly a second margin between Bright and Wind Cup. And the fastest man on the track at the moment is Jason Bright by a margin. There he is. This little battle for second looks pretty interesting though, doesn't it? It's headed by Wind Cup, but Tanda, Coulthard and Courtney are all on the end of a pretty tight string there. So Bright's got it out to 0.95. We'll get an update on that. Jason Bright leads this race and in doing so also leads the race for the Jason Richards Memorial Trophy. 14 laps of 35 and look at this. We know the history between Winterbottom and Alex Davison in the previous race down here at turn five. Well, Alex has stayed well and truly out of Frosty's way. So no grief to counsel for the Ford Performance Racing Garage. And this is brother Will on the attack now. That's Alex just in front. So he has a duck down the inside here, down at turn eight at the hairpin. And he didn't quite get it done. So when they launch out the other side, a little bit of brotherly love here between turns 10 and 11 as they try and sort it out. Look at that. Oh, he's, oh. He, he didn't have enough time to grab the gear. He left it in fourth. Left it in fourth and dragged it on the rev limiter because he had a bit of white knuckle fever trying to make sure that he could get through the last corner. Edwards, Campbell Little to the right, Rod Nash in the middle there. That would have been an interesting discussion had things got a little bit uglier. So the gap's pretty much a second. And Garth Tander is now starting to appear bigger and bigger behind Jamie Winkup. In fact, it's a four-way battle, if you like, for second. You race car drivers are often saying it's a topsy-turvy world, this V8 supercar game. And Scotty McLaughlin, you found that out, a win in the first race of this weekend. And here's the car at number 33, all laid up in the garage. Yeah, unfortunate. Uh, I feel sorry for all my sponsors, Fujitsu Racing, involved in all those guys. But uh, especially these boys, it's, it's, it's hard. We're going to go back with a bent car. But um, I think we showed some great pace. And to get our first win is a fairy tale. So especially here and for myself. So thanks to all the fans and uh, everyone for the sport. I really appreciate it. You still got the buzz from that first win? <laughs> I'm going to have the buzz for about three weeks, mate. I don't know how I'm going to live it down. Probably longer, so uh, I'll never forget that moment. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I just want more of it, so bring it on. Youngest ever winner in V8 supercar history. That's a nice medal to pin on your chest. Well done, Scott. Yeah, thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. He hit the wall really hard in uh, race eight. He was searching for air to get into the lungs there. The, the great news is he's OK. And I was down there in the bunker with him before and talking about it, and I, I said how cruel it can be after such a great win, but also just to make sure that he treats himself well after that crash because that's a that was a seriously big crash. And he to get on those neurofins quick because you need to get some painkillers in. But the other thing is that we suspected that it was a tyre and we confirmed it in the last race, but with the subsequent inspection of the car, the tyre didn't pop. The tyre did get damaged when the rim broke, 
but they were still looking for the cause when we came back in. That's right, the steering, steering arm failure, they're saying. Mm. You're riding with uh, James Courtney here. You would have seen some of the clouds hovering around. Maybe that might play a part at the end of this race. Whoa! Too close for comfort on the rear of Fabian Coulthard. Up the back straight. It looks like Coulthard's having a struggle there. The car was sliding through three. It didn't come off turn four particularly well in second gear. And it was all that James Courtney could do to not centre punch the back of it. Came off six cleanly. Let's see what it behaves like down here at eight because this is uh, very telling in terms of turn and drive. Uh, it launched off there, okay. So here's David Reynolds up the inside of Shane Van Gisberg, and this is for 10th position. They've been having a really good battle the whole race, basically. The other guy that's going very well at the moment is Winterbottom. He is flying. He's taking ground out of James Courtney. He'll be on the back of that pack very soon. Fastest guy on the track at the moment. Now, Bright's pace has just stabilised a little. He was marching away ever so slowly, but it's now back to exactly one second. And on the last lap, Jamie took two tenths back out of Jason Bright. So there'll be a little seesaw there. But still, yeah. there's this battle brewing between Wincup, Tander, Coulthard and Courtney. Yeah, and probably there's still a battle brewing between Winterbottom and uh, Wincup. He will have the bit between the teeth. We saw that interview I did with him earlier on, and let me tell you off air, there was a few extra comments, a few extra verbs. <laughs> um, but just reflecting on Bridey on Wink up there before, one of the great attributes to any champion in this sport is the ability not only to overtake, but to be overtaken. And the way Jamie did that, get on with it, except you've been done at this corner, get on with the program. You see guys do it really well, and a guy we're already seeing do well is that young fellow Scotty McLaughlin last week at Tasmania. Take note. Yeah, look, exactly right, like on And Neil made the comment that takes two to tango in those sorts of incidents and the racing etiquette of this a little bit like Shane Van Gisbergen on this one he knows he's gone he hung wide and he basically let Dave Reynolds through on that maneuver that's exactly what happened with Wink Cup and Bright when you make that choice you limit the damage yes if you press on with it very often you buy yourself a bigger problem and that becomes a greater deficit so it's actually smart sometimes to to know when to do that that was the view before, looking from pit lane skywards. So all the teams can see the nastiness weather-wise around us. Winterbottom's quick again here, uh, but the problem he's got before he gets back to reignite that little stash that he's got going with Wind Cup that's been happening for about 15 years, uh, he's got a wall of cars to deal with along the way. <laughs> I think it's at 15 laps. No, but it has the, those two have been at it for a long time. They know each other well. They give each other plenty of needle. They respect each other as racers. But that's about where you draw the line. And if I can just put a full stop on that previous comment, I'll stand next to Mark Beretta here. He's become in 14 laps the world champion at being overtaking. We'll get some expert comments off him a little later in the show. <laughs> Prema launching high over that turn two curbing down there. A lot of air under that car. That was right at the track limit. Check out the bounce here and the gap between turn 10 and 11. It's only a short little shoot in there, but it's got a ridge in the road, and the curb triggers a big leap with the cars. Watch for Winterbottom here. He's going to have a look. He's been very aggressive here all weekend. There it is, down the inside, and he's got it right on the braking limit. Courtney will argue with him, and he slithers by. Good pass. Good, good move, Frost. Very good pass. Well, Courtney had to hold on with everything he had there on car 22. Somehow he didn't lock it up. He was skating down the outside of the circuit and left the door open for Winterbottom. Yes, and again, James Courtney knew he was gone then. Yep. So, tried to hang on and race as best he could, but not push it to a silly point. Here's the replay. Check it out. And he got it all done in the mid to late part of the stop. Surprised how much grip the inside of the track's offering up there at the moment. Chris O'Toole crew chief at Ford Performance Racing watching the big screen coverage and he's pretty pleased with that outcome so his man's now moved up to fifth it's Bright, Wincup, Tanda, Coulthard, Winterbottom then Courtney, the brothers Davison seventh and eighth, Craig Lowndes a bit quiet at the moment in ninth and David Reynolds is tenth so 
And back on board we go with James Courtney. So position six now for the Holden Racing Team. And Gartander is further up the road in third. See how oh, oh. Ingle, big lock up here. Well, stayed on. Stayed on. He's got Todd Kelly right behind. Oh, no, right behind. Real, well and truly behind. <laughs> 14th and 15th. So Rusty's lost a bit of ground here. And Rick Kelly had enough pace while that was going on to probably get by them. But just couldn't go around the left or the right. James Moffat, meanwhile, is in front of this group. He is 12th at the moment, the best of the new cars for the new season. And uh, he's currently 13 seconds off the race lead uh, on lap 22. So it gives you that, that gives you some understanding. They lose a lot of that based on grid position, but it gives you an understanding. You don't need to find a lot of performance to suddenly find yourself further up the road. That's their mission at the moment. Todd Kelly trying very hard behind Russell Ingle. As you said, James Moffat's done a very good job this weekend. And down the inside goes Winterbottom. And again, Fabian quite clever about that. He's done the crisscross. He'll be on the dirty side, the outside for turn 9, 10. But he's around the outside. He's going to get it done. Oh, that's very close. He actually squeezed Frosty onto that curb too far. And it almost made contact. That was very close. Taking you through to the chequered flag now on Seven Sport, the V8 Supercar Championship. 13 laps to go on the final day, the final race of the ITM 400 Auckland. And while we were in the break, Mark Winterbottom tried to put a move on Fabian Coulthard. So Winterbottom is the big mover and shaker at this stage of the race. He's currently fifth. And he almost got past and then had a scary moment. You watch this. Well, he kind of did for a moment. Here he is, in front there, looking good. And then the big crisscross, nicely done by Fabian Coulthard. They pop out the other side, but we held our breath oh. on this one because Winterbottom was pinched up on the kerb, side by side on the track. And here's the replay of Ingle locking up and running wide at turn five as well with Todd Kelly. It gives him a wake up call when they get to turn six. Side by side on the track, those guys, Brad Jones Racing and Ford Performance Racing. And there's the little, hello, this is me, I'm Todd. Nice to meet you. And, uh, FPR alongside each other in the garages. So what happens when you go down afterwards is Brad Jones and Tim Edwards have sort of got this thing going between the garages as well, where the, the, the two guys that are running operations have got their own little arm wrestle happening between the garages. Don't you think Russell and Todd have met before? <laughs> Metaphorically speaking. For a minute there, I thought he was going to introduce him to his other brother, Rick, as well. <laughs> Hi, I'm Todd. <laughs> can't even start to imagine what went through your head when you were racing. <laughs> That's right. Sometimes not nearly enough. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should ask your engineers. <laughs> okay, Jason Bright, three seconds. Is his lead of the race. So you're looking at second and third. Wing Cup and Tander as the dust flies. Kulpa and Winner Bottom. And James Courtney. So there's still plenty of fight left inside the top ten. There's the gap on your split time, so 3.1 seconds for Jason Bright approaching lap 26. So it's not far to go now for Team BOC and Brad Jones Racing to take home the Jason Richards Memorial Trophy. Gee, that's fitting. Very impressive performance from them this weekend. It's been no fluke their speed this weekend. They were quick at the Clips of 500, but unlucky. Winterbottom again, searching down the inside of Coulthard. They were quick at the non-championship event in Melbourne. They were quick in Tasmania, and they're confirming that pace again this weekend in the Lockwood and the BOC cars. And uh, I was a bit worried, well, only three or four laps ago, that uh, Bright was going to be grabbed again by Wink Cup, but he's got it stabilised, and if anything, he's opened it up once more. 
although their lap speed relative to each other is identical on that last lap. They both did a 1 minute 4.6 Brian and win cup. And a good lead now, 3.1 seconds for Bright. He just needs to use his head now, just don't take any risks. That's a lead, very important to that team and to Jason. And now Lowndes under pressure from Dave Reynolds. They've been battling. That's a pretty bold Whoa. move. I wouldn't like to be Jonathan Webb out there. That's pretty wild. And he just gets back in behind Alberto. So that was Caruso around the inside of Webb. Webb got wide. As the Kelly boys still harass Russell Engel for 14th position. Alex Prima just up ahead and James Moffat. So this is Webb getting wide at the top of the hill. And Caruso will get down the inside. So he just can't accelerate the car out there on the green stuff and Caruso capitalises, which means then that Webb's still on the dirty side of the road and he just gathered it up very nicely. Craig Lowndes, a bit out of sorts this weekend. We've seen a couple of uncharacteristic mistakes. Car not quite good enough. Dave Reynolds now with a lot of pressure being applied to Craig for ninth spot. These guys are 10 seconds away from the race lead at the moment. See Craig not able to get down, tuck down to that apex and wheel spin off the corner. Wind Cup. Oh, tire failure. Tire failure there on the left hand rear again for Winterbottom. That's the same as we Sorry saw yesterday. Him. Look at the damage. He's on the rim. Left rear tire. We'll just come in, put another one on and go. Geez, he's having a bad run, isn't he? Seriously. Completely on the rim. And this kind of stuff's happening to Mark Winterbottom just when he gets himself into a position and does all the hard work, it comes undone so quickly. It's just terrible bad luck. He was making a massive indent on the top five. So Dave Reynolds threw on Lowndes. So good job, Dave Reynolds. Very tenacious, kept that pressure up. James Moffat now with a lot of pressure on Van Giersbergen to get into the top 10 cars. So Van Giersbergen currently 10th with Moffat behind. Winterbottom coming into the pit. Good job, mate. Good job. And almost a replica of the damage we saw yesterday. Not quite as severe. Basically tore the left-hand rear quarter off the car yesterday. Okay. Up the wheel up. Frank Adamson cool. there, the category Frank technical manager. Dog leg, if you can, on the dog leg. Hold that in. Yeah, almost an identical repair to what we saw yesterday. They're the mounts in underneath they're trying to grab because they'll pierce the wheel if they'll leave those there. And the reason they're using, instead of using these rolls of duct tape, as we told yesterday, there we go. Now, that's going to be interesting. I reckon I would have spent a little bit longer on that since he's out of the race. Uh, you don't want air going in under there. The aero, but worse, you don't want Frank Adamson, that bloke right there, from VA Supercars saying you haven't patched it up well enough, bring it back in like they did yesterday. I agree, Larko. It didn't look like it was anywhere near stable enough down on the left-hand rear lower quarter. And it was, although it was taped up, it'll still, when they get to the speeds that this place has with those bumps at 250k, this is on board now with James Courtney. You can see straight ahead, that's the left-hand rear tyre delaminating. And you can see straight away the stability and he was very lucky to be able to get away with not running into the back of Courtney there. That was close. Well, what, another 100 metres further down the back straight? That could have been calamitous. In terms of what it's going to do for his race, well, it's over. So it's bad enough as it is. Bright still in the threes at the moment. He's maintaining great consistency. Look at this. James Moffat having a great battle here with Shane Van Gisberg. And this is going to put him 10th if he can make it stick. It's not done, though. Shane gets the spot back. That was good presence of mind from Van Gisberg. And then he was able to get across in front of him before that curve. If he had to run it the other way, it would have been a much difficult or much more difficult pass. Well, Dean Fiore managed to pull off one of the great escapes coming into pit entry a little while ago. What happened out there? There was a fair bit of jostling off the start, as there always is. And we're too wide for like three corners. And then I've come out of the hairpin and I'm on the outside of somebody. I'm not sure who it was, but trying to figure it out now. And then it just, like we touched and the wheel clean ripped straight out of my hand and I went straight for the wall. And I'm so happy that pit entry was there because um, had there been a, a full stop there, it would have been a big stop for me.
<laughs> like the magic carpet underneath you. You will be greatly relieved to get home to Perth for the next round. Oh, tell me about it. I'm really looking forward to that. Love the track. Um, plenty of race wins there, so hopefully we can have a good showing for Lucas Dumbrell and Dodo Insurance. Hey, bring it on. Thanks, Dean. Cheers. Oh, James Moffat, he was all locked up there, tried to get down the inside, speedway the car in on the rear brake at turn eight. Don't know that they made contact or if he did, it was very light. He kind of got away with it, but it was absolutely at the braking limit, perhaps slightly beyond. It was actually a good bit, very good bit of car control. He got it right out sideways, gathered it up, hardly bumped, and got away with that one. So now, Tander, a lot of pressure on Wink Up for second position. He's been applying more and more and more pressure. He's only three tenths of a second, that's the gap. And it's four seconds at the front, and Tander, very big lockup. That was really on the braking limit behind Wink Up. That was very close to skating the rear wheels in and bumping Wink Up off the road. And he's about to do the same thing now. Now Wink Up needs to turn back the other side. Here's the crisscross. Tander gets down there, but this is the crisscross. So he's lost the advantage by running in there too hot and too sideways. So Davison now by Courtney. So Davison's speed at the end of this race is also very impressive. And, and Gisberger. Gisberger off the road. I saw him started to drop down the timing sheets and that's the reason why. Down there at turn eight, Alex Premer climbs all over the back of him. So Jamie Wincup trying his best. The dying laps to hold off Garth Tander. Fabian Coulthard, meanwhile, would love nothing more than to get past one of these guys and all things going to plan, have two BJR cars on the podium. There was a phase a while ago, more than a year or so back, where Tander and Wincup had some great battles. And I can remember recalling asking Jamie Wincup who he respected and who he enjoyed racing with. And he nominated Tander as one of the guys that he really enjoys racing with. And uh, I thought there was great respect between the two of them in the exchange one lap earlier and the way they managed that. This is having the effect of getting Coulthard back into the game as well. Meantime, 4.47 seconds is the gap right to win cup. This is such a special moment for Brad Jones Racing. You know, all the things about what Jason Richards has done for that team and as part of that team. And for the BOC car, Jason Bright, to be leading this event and to be poised to win the Jason Richards Memorial is an unbelievable dream come true for that Albury based team. Tander now down the inside of Wink Cup. I think he'll get it done this time. He does. Nice move. Now the crisscross again. And the way that Garth skated all the way to turn six then mean that he effectively legally blocked to six. Now he'll cover at eight. Jamie's going to shadow him in there. He's got to also be very careful of what Fabian does from behind. So remember that Coulthard is right in the wheel tracks of these cars. There they are. This time Tander's got away with it. It's a nice job. Jamie's having a little bit of a struggle here, so his tyres have gone away. Talked a bit about this weekend, about the seven sets of tyres, 28 of them, and the way they were managed through the four practice sessions, four qualifying sessions, a shootout for some of the drivers, and four races. At this point in the weekend, some of them are pretty much on the ragged edge with their tyre stock. But I think your point early was they started these tyre pressures up for this race. The more the car slides around now, the higher the tyre pressures become. The temperature comes up, the pressure comes up, and he's in trouble now. That's, that's why it looked bad in this phase of the race. It looked great at the start of the race. There's Lucy <laughs> looking on. Jason's partner. <laughs> Jason's partner is... Uh, getting down to the final laps and there's only eight points in it in terms of the Jason Richards Memorial Trophy now between Brighty and Garth Tander. Oh, Tander oh. wide! She only Gee. just got that back on. It was Morse coding, wasn't it? He was tapping the brake pedal, trying to get a release of that lock brake, still being able to steer the car and at the same time stop it. Garth recovered it. This is the last lap. And don't, and don't discount Fabian yet because I, I, he would love to get on the podium here for this race and celebrate this with Jason Bright. 15th of December 2011, one of the saddest days in our business when we lost Jason Richards. He's right there, Croppo. 
He's right there. This is big time, this breaking area at turn five. This man's got it won, but this man's gonna have to work very hard. Tanda will go through in second. Coulthard is going to continue to push and push. He will never give in. You think of all the things that Jason Bright has achieved in this sport. He's been around for so long. He's won Bathurst. He's done it all. A couple of years ago, he and the entire V8 community farewelled one of the great guys, Jason Richards. Well, today the tears will flow. They're on their feet because sometimes it is about so much more than winning. Excellent work, P1. Be proud, mate. Uh, what a result. What a moment. An emotional moment for all. Yeah, and let's get in here and try and grab a word. Hey, Brado, can I just... Sorry, buddy, can I just grab a word? A trophy's a trophy, a race win's a race win, but, wow, mate, <laughs> some things are just meant to be. Yeah, well, you know, I'd like to think so. I mean, that's fantastic for the team. We really wanted to come and win this. This means as much to me as a Bathurst trophy, and you, of all people, know what that means to me. So I can't wait to get it home. It's really, really important to us, and, and it helps, you know, keep Jay's memory alive, and that's what's really important today. Very happy for you. Fantastic stuff. He did it the great way, too. I mean, wow. that last lap was effectively a parade lap for Jason Bright. And I'd love to know the thoughts that were going through his mind and his heart as he completed that final lap around here. He's had success at this circuit before. We know he's already had success this year. But that will be the one that Jason remembers forever and Bradley Jones racing also. So Dean Fiore down there at the bottom of the list didn't make it through and he's going to let it all hang out here. Started from pole position. Had to show utter patience while Jamie Wincup had that initial burst of speed. And then once he got into the groove, it was focused like you've never seen before. What a job too from Garth Tander. The top 10 all the way through this weekend. He's been rock solid. Jamie Wincup on the podium as well, again. And Fabian Coulthard in fourth position. Great to see HRT back and competitive at this place, Matt. That's a real resurgence for Garth Tander. It'll give his points tally a big boost. He's had a very solid weekend. Well, Pukekohe Park Raceway is the spiritual home of New Zealand motorsport. And something magical happened here today. that Jace was just taking a minute there to collect his thoughts. A good touch from Garth Tander. Yes. <laughs> 190th championship event. 417th race. His 19th career victory. Like I said, he's one in categories all around the world. He's been to the top of the podium at Bathurst. And this one will mean absolutely everything to him. You couldn't have said it better, Matty. Jason Bright just uh, has taken a moment in the car. He's been congratulated by Garth Tander and the crowd here uh, just cheering emphatically for Jason Bright. Jason, well done. Wins are always special. This one today is something else. Oh, you're right there, mate. We, uh, you know, we did that the hard way. We've got a really quick car at the moment. Just got to qualify better and make better starts. And uh, you know, we can win a lot more of those, as you saw. But you know, we, last night I went to bed. I really wanted to win that for JR. And um, yeah, that one's for him. <laughs> well, tell us about those emotions on that last lap as you're coming to the line. What sort of feelings were pulsing through the body? Oh, mate, I'm very emotional. You know, I'm, I'm a pretty emotional guy as it is, but. I got a uh, message from Sienna last weekend saying she wanted to give me the trophy. So, yeah, worked pretty hard this weekend to win it. She's going to get to do that, Bridie. Enjoy it. Well done. One of the great moments of the sport. Well done, Jason Bright.
Garth Tander, a great second place. You pushed hard all the way. It was really happening back in that pack with you guys. Yeah, it was. I mean, I just said to Jamie when we got out of the car, I said, man, your thing had pace at the start, but it turned out maybe a bit too much pace. So um, our guys did a fantastic job. Uh, we had really good race pace in the races. We've still got to work on qualifying, but um, Brody was pretty motivated to win that one. And, um, you know, it's obviously fantastic for BJR and Car 8 and the BOC car to win the Jason Richards Trophy. It's, um, you know, it's pretty special. If that means I have to finish second in that race, then so be it. Are you taking away a lot of positives from this weekend? Yeah, we do. I mean, um, we, our car's not great on the bumps, and we, we made it slightly better over the bumps. There's lots of bumps here. So uh, we've got to keep working at it. I think we've still got a couple of things that we can improve with our car that'll probably close the gap to the BJR cars. I still think they're the pace. But, um, you know, if, if we said you'd come away with a couple of podiums and a second on Sunday afternoon earlier in the week, I would have been really happy with that. Well done, GT. Off to the podium. Thanks, mate. Cheers. And Jamie Wincup, boy, it's been an action-packed weekend. You had Fabian Coulthard all over you on the way to the line there. Yeah, yeah, obviously, um, absolutely wrapped for Bridie, you know, on a, on a weekend we, uh, we remember a um, good mate, Jason Richards. But uh, I give it all we had. As, uh, as Gar said, we had some great, <laughs> great pace uh, first lap, but, uh, but then it went downhill from there. But uh, all in all, we're still learning and happy to be on the podium. All right, Jamie, congratulations. Enjoy it up there. Thank you. Cheers. Will Davidson uh, finished fifth, mate, but I know like all of us, you'd be happy as anyone that uh, Jason Bright has taken the uh, Jason Richards Memorial Trophy. So firstly, that, that's a great thing. It is um, on top of everything else. Um, what does it matter when we're discussing things like this? It's yeah. still hard to believe that uh, we, we are celebrating that trophy, but uh, what a fitting person and team to win at the BOC Brad Jones Racing Car. It's uh, incredible the way these things happen. So I'm, I'm thrilled personally with my weekend. Um, but, you know, to see Charlotte and the little girls here and Dave Richards on the grid, um, knowing I was <laughs> in contention for that trophy, I was obviously I, I would have been so humbled and honoured to win it. But, uh, you know, seeing Bridie and those guys, what a story. It is, mate. And looking at some of the driving out there, I reckon there's a lot of guys hungry to win it. Now, you're leaving here 31 points ahead in the championship. Do you think that was going to be the case when you arrived here? <laughs> no, uh, well, well, maybe when I arrived here, but um, we struggled for a bit of pace early on in the weekend. Um, but we're, we're working really hard at understanding this car and trying to tune it into different tracks. And um, obviously, I'd like to be P1 every session, but it's uh, quite satisfying to, to progress over the course of a weekend and uh, string a weekend like this together that didn't start brilliant for me. And we've just got better and better and um, made it a bit hard for myself being off eighth then. But um, every race we've gone forward, um, obviously, getting a race win was sensational this morning. And, um, you know, we're only going to get stronger as this year goes on and uh, I've just got to keep trying to be smart and um, let them all drop off like flies. But uh, obviously, I want to win every race. I'm not here to play the consistency game. I want to win, but um, we're just working on the car right now and I'll hopefully do my bit. So fast forward in a few weeks, mate, we're off to Perth and you and I both know that that is one of the toughest tracks in the country to sort your car out for. What are your thoughts? <laughs> uh, my thoughts are uh, tie life, as always, will be uh, a major issue, particularly with the oversteering nature of these new cars. Um, you know, and obviously I won two races there last year nursing the soft, so I, I hope, uh, hope I can do the same next time. But, um, yeah, it's going to be a seriously interesting weekend. Well, with the formats and the intensity we saw here today, I say bring it on. So look forward to it, mate. I've got sore arms as we work them that hard this weekend. It was, uh, it was great to be back at Puk Pukakawi. Cheers, mate. Cheers, thanks. Yeah, our championship leader now, Will Davison, by 31 points over Jamie Wincup. So he's well and truly flying the Ford flag, breaking through for Ford's first victory of the season earlier today. So let's head to the podium. This is going to be a very special moment in our history. It's nine of the season, the 2013 V8 Supercars ITM 400 Auckland. Would you please congratulate our first place driver from Team BOC, Jason Bright. In second place for the Holden Racing Team, Garth Tandar. In third place for Red Bull Racing Australia, watch the lights, Jamie Wincup. And representing our winning team, Team BOC, is Chris Rissman. Making the presentation of the third place trophy is David McConnell, Chairman, Auckland Tourism Events and Economic Development. Presenting the second place trophy is Glenn Johnson, Chief Executive Officer, World Exchange. Making the presentation to our winning team is Neville Smith, ITM store owner, representing our naming rights sponsor, ITM. And making the presentation of the first place trophy is Dawn Mahiri, ITM board member, again from our naming rights sponsor, ITM. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, would you please congratulate the winning driver of the inaugural Jason Richards Memorial Trophy from Team BOC, Jason Bright. And making the presentation of the Jason Richards Memorial Trophy is Charlotte Richards. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2013 ITM 400 Auckland Race 9 winners. Well, that's a wonderful touch. Sienna Richards said to Bridie that she wanted to present him with the trophy, and she has done so. And our love to Charlotte as well. On a day where the motorsport gods shined on us in the right way.